How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video here on the channel today. How are we doing guys? But today we're starting something brand new here on the channel. We're gonna do some post-race reviews for the NASCAR Cup Series here on the channel. I don't know why I haven't done this for the last what? Friggin. I could have done this all of 2023. I really should have. I plan to start this at the beginning of 2024, but it just never came together. So today we're trying something different. Today we are going to give you guys my post race rundown of what just happened at the Goodyear 400 at the Darlington Raceway. My God, do we ever have a good race to start off my post race uh, recap with? Because man, what a race we just had at Dar Darlington, man. But without further delay, let's get into this Darlington recap. I'm not too sure, to be honest, how I'm going to go about like making this all but i'm still getting my fingers wet when it comes to uh post-race recaps or whatever so like bear with me i'm still getting used to this but uh let's talk about uh the first stage so we'll start off at the beginning i mean tyler reddick was on the pole he led majority of the laps I, was it Keselowski who came up and passed him? Keselowski had a really long, good long run car. Ty Gibbs was in the picture at the beginning. And then when pit stops happened, William Byron ended up taking the lead. Kyle Larson and that beautiful Terry Labonte throwback. He came up and got the win in stage, stage one. But the thing I enjoyed about the first stage in particular, there was a lot of comers and goers. So, you know, it wasn't just this regular next gen 670 horsepower racing that we usually get on tracks like this on tracks like darlington bristol i know nascar is going in this direction but we do need more tire wear at these kinds of tracks like bristol went really well because of the tire wear all the other short tracks this year haven't had any tire wear they were awful like i remember a month ago back at martinsville joey logano was able to go like 170 laps on tires like that shouldn't be happening <laughs> like you should need to be able to make a pit stop 170 laps into a run especially where you're cranking the wheel so much at martinsville but yeah i love how darlington's an old worn out surface so that way it forces drivers to pit more it forces drivers to force their action because i mean darlington's a driver's track man it really is it's when I'm racing it in the simulator, Darlington is one of my favorite tracks to drive in the game. Well, in iRacing or what have you personally, because it's it's really you versus you. And I mean, you can't really get too wide because the track's so narrow and it's so hard to pass because if you get that run on the inside, that when the exit a corner, the outside's gonna have a much better momentum. So it's really a you versus you kind of track. That's why I really enjoy Darlington, the surface. It benefits people who ha who are able to save their stuff and go well in the long run and for people to have long run cars. Like we'll talk about later, Brad Keselowski had a long run car. Kyle Larson had a long run car. Those were the two best long run cars in my opinion. But yeah, Larson won stage one. Let's get into stage two. It became pretty clear to me that if this race came down to the end, you're probably gonna find it hard to beat Tyler Reddick because, man, I don't know what we gotta do to make that first pit stall so unoverpowered, but my God, it is so OP for the pole setter to have that first first spot in qualifying. Like, holy God, dude, it's, it works miracles, I swear. But yeah, no. T for once, Tyler's Redd Tyler Reddick's pit crew were on it today, so props to them. But yeah, Tyler Reddick got the lead again at the end, at the beginning of stage two. Once again, it was Brad Keselowski and uh, Kyle Larson coming back up there. Shout out to Ford, by the way. They're finally starting to show some speed again. I believe in the finishing results, five of the top ten drivers were in a Ford, and that's really impressive. So, excuse me. We'll talk more about Ford and the results later, but stage two was really a caution spree, caution spree stage. I remember Zane Smith spun out, spun out at one point. Um, 
who else spun out in that stage? John Hunter Nemechek spun out, I remember that. that. That was when Ryan Blaney went out of the race too. He wasn't too happy with William Byron. Lots of rivalries in this race, but that's something to get into later when we talk about the ending of the race. But overall, man, this was... It was another good comers and goers stage. It was nice to see Terry Labonte up in the booth. Uh, even though he didn't really have much to say, he was just kind of up there doing his thing. If he if he would have been up there for stage three, none of us probably would have noticed because he just he really wasn't saying anything when it comes to the commentary side of things. But, you know, Texas Terry, it's nice to see him, nice to hear him say stuff. But, I mean, I, I just love how every time he goes to say something, it just be like, Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I remember in those days. And, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. It's, it was always, oh, something with Terry. You got you gotta love Texas Terry Labonte. How can you not? I am I gotta go buy, like, one of those old Terry Labonte cornflake shirts. That would be pretty awesome. But, yeah, stage two. Stage two was won by Tyler Reddick. Uh, who was up there challenging him towards the end? I believe it was... God, I can't even remember. It's been so long since the end of that stage, but I believe Keslowski was up there. It was re the main guys who were up there pretty well. The whole Joey Logano was up there contending for stage points too. In the first stage, Truex was up there too. It was surprising. We didn't see Denny Hamlin much during the run of the day, but a good point run for Denny Hamlin. He pulled off a P4, so not too bad for Denny Hamlin. But I keep wanting to get into the results just because of what happened, but man oh man I, I gotta get better with my post-race recaps here but at the end of the day uh yeah good good overall stage two great overall racing so far at darlington it was more of a caution free caution stage but yeah uh let's get into the final stage before we recap this race in total then we get into the final stage at darlington it was about 100 laps each stage well the first two stages were 90 and then the final stage was about 100 laps so overall that's how that's how the stages were laid out at least but you could really tell towards the end this was the how do i explain it uh the the, the reddick versus keselowski show that's what it was really turning out to be everyone else it didn't really feel like they had a fair shot at it almost it just felt like those were the best two cars all day though the cars that qualified first and second, ironically enough, but yeah, Reddick had the better short run car, that is for sure, but if the lap went 30, 40 laps long, Brad Keselowski had the better car, he, his long run speed was miles quicker than Tyler Reddick's, but, and, and Tyler Reddick dominated the day too, I think he led like 150 laps or something like that, he, he led at least half the race, uh, it's the most last 2311s ever led in a race as well, so that's pretty impressive. But overall, man, uh, it was it was really coming down to strategy because if you guys are avid watchers of the NASCAR Cup Series, you would know that Darlington is... The, the tire wear is very real here. Every time you're coming in, you're getting some sort of adjustment, and you are getting four fresh tires every single pit stop. If you're doing two two tires or no tires at Darlington, you're doing something wrong. It's like something's not clicking up here. If you're taking two or four t or zero or two tires, but some of the guys they wanted to split the stage in two really, and some of the guys were gonna split the stage. We're gonna do well. Some of them are gonna do two stops. Some of them are just gonna do one stop. Until Kyle Larson wrecked. Uh, Kyle Larson was battling his teammate William Byron caught up in the defense and that ended up bringing out uh well i shouldn't say it brought out a caution immediately the i believe it was it was one of the rear tires went down and it just it just completely spun him into the wall uh the beautiful terry labani throwback went straight into the defense and a smile ha, was uh shown from above by dale senior uh shades of bristol 95 and 99 but where was the black number three when you needed him? He was on the track. You just couldn't see him. But that essentially... Was that the caution with 35 to go? I, yeah, it was. It was that caution. So that sets up the final stretch of the race. Where you have Redick in front. Keselowski in second. And those two were going at it. Because, I mean, 
Kozlowski had the lead when the caution came out, but Reddick's pit crew and pit stop, or like pit stall were so perfect. The pit stall was just so close to the commitment line of like you saying that, uh, like saying who's first off pit road and all that. So Tyler Reddick had a huge advantage having that first overall pit stop. Like tracks like Phoenix, Darlington, Richmond, like all those tracks are hugely beneficial to the guys who get pole position. I will say that. But yeah, Brad Keselowski knew that he had to get the lead quick and as soon as possible. So he chose the inside on the choose cone. They went back green and they went side. Brad Keselowski and Tyler Reddick went side by side for at least seven laps. It was it was awesome to watch. And boy, if you just listen to Boyer and Harvick's commentary in the booth, you would know how awesome it was. But then um, after that, um, well, as that battle was happening, uh, Keselowski committed a little too hard. Him and Reddick got into one another. Chris Busher swoops almost down to the pit wall to get past those two, which was crazy. But then we have, this is where it's, I mean, it got real before that, but this is where it got really real. Because with, I believe it was with eight to go, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, Tyler Reddick was catching Chris Busher. He had the faster car. Yeah, Chris Busher somehow made it in the third. I mean, typical Chris Busher run, man. I guess he, he's not hit that superhuman run like he did in August yet, where he just won three races in a month for no reason. <laughs> like, it was just Chris Busher for you. He just comes up and wins for no reason. Like, I don't know where he comes from, but he just does. <laughs> That's what Chris Busher does. I, I'm going to have to, like, pick him for the rest of the month or something because... He just always seems to be there. I don't know what it is. He just always seems to be there when he gets good momentum. Chris Buescher is the definition of a momentum-based driver. If you look at the stats and everything, Chris Buescher is the definition of a momentum-based driver, in my opinion. But anyway, uh, you can see Reddick is catching Buescher for the lead, and Reddick commits to the inside of Chris Buescher, and at the end of the day, Reddick gets uh, a, commits a little too hard trying to commit the or trying to get the slide job done. Busher was committing trying to get that run on the outside on Reddick. They touch. Both of them are left with flat tires. They both have to make pit stops, which leaves the six car Brad Keselowski in the lead. Ty Gibbs was catching him a bit towards the end of that race, but Brad Keselowski breaks his 110 race winning streak a winning streak that goes back to april of 2021 and wins at the goodyear 400 at darlington raceway awesome to see brad kislowski in victory lane man i never thought i would say that about like four years ago in his team penske days i used to despise brad kislowski and uh, joey logano back in the day but man brad's become so much more likable now that he's at RFK just saying good to see the cat in the hat Jack Roche back in victory lane too great to see all that but yeah then we ended up having the mini scruffle on pit road between Busher and Reddick when the camp when Fox's camera cut the Busher running I literally got on my seat I was like fight 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 <laughs> like I was so excited and hyped up it was like we're getting a NASCAR fight in 2024 this is gonna be epic uh and they're actually going to let him fight it out on, like, Chastain and Gregson last year. Wholehearted, this is an opinion of mine, but Tony Stewart was correct. Uh, in NASCAR fights, it needs to be like hockey. Uh, let them bang it out, and then as soon as one of them goes to the ground, it's over. They're grown men, they should know how to defend themselves enough. And if they're angry and pissed off out of the race car... They should be able to let their displeasure be known. Like, I mean, Ryan Blaney let his displeasure be known on the track. But, yeah, Busher and Keselowski, they... Busher and Keselowski. Busher and Reddick. Uh, they got into that mini scruffle. Reddick said he effed up. At the end of the day, I do think Reddick did overcommit. Like, his, I don't know if his spotter's got to get in his ear more or what. But at the end of the day... Tyler Reddick committed a little too much to a move that wasn't there. And you could even see after it happened, Busher stuck his hand at the window like, what the hell? 
Uh, what have I ever done to you to deserve that? And that is what he was stressing to him on the pit road there. But, man, good to be back here at Darlington, man. Me, personally, Darlington is my favorite track on the schedule to, to watch. I would love to go someday. If any of you guys want to hook me up with Darlington tickets, let me know. I'm not going to be begged for tickets around here. But if I want to go, I'll pay for it myself. But if you guys... Whoever wants to hook me up, let me know. But anyways, uh, yeah, great race at Darlington. Let's get into the results. These results are probably unofficial from the NASCAR app. I'll put the top 10 or 15 results somewhere on screen. But Brad Keselowski wins, followed by Ty Gibbs. Josh Berry with a great run, finishing third place. Did not expect that. Denny Hamlin in fourth. Chase Briscoe in fifth. Wow, what a result for... What a day for Stuart Haas Racing. William Byron finished a sixth. William Byron was my pick going into this race. Watch my iRacing videos if you want my full picks and predictions every week. But uh, Bubba Wallace finished seventh. Good overall race for the 23 team. Uh, he was up in the top 10 pretty well the whole day. So good result for Bubba Wallace. Alex Bowman pulling off an eighth. Great result for him. I didn't expect much out of Alex Bowman going into Darlington. So good for him. Just, wow, Justin Haley with a ninth? Oh my god, what a result for Rick, Rick Ware Racing. That's got to be like their first top 10 on a non-super speedway ever. Unless maybe they had a road course ringer in the car one of those days. But Michael McDowell with a 10th on the week that he just announced his move to Spire. So, good for him, I guess. I mean, those front row cars, they were in the top 15 pretty well the whole day. I mean... You could see, like, Todd Gilliland and Michael McDowell, they had roughly the same speed all day. But, yeah, let's have a look at this, too. Ford in first, third, fifth, ninth, and tenth. How about that for the Blue Ovals? They needed that after how rough of a season this has been for them so far. They've they found something in that Mustang Dark Horse. Hopefully, that'll pay off for them. Uh, looking through the rest of the results, you have Chastain, Elliott Bell. Man, Bell had a rough day. I'm surprised he rebounded the 13th. Gregson, Gilliland, LaJoy, Priest, Gralla, Jones, Sindrick, Logano. Man, Logano had a top 10 run that whole day. How did he fall the 21st? Burton, Stenhouse, Suarez, Truex, Truex. He was a victim of that Ryan Blaney wreck. He would have been a lot better if he didn't just get involved in that wreck. Hosevar, Bush, Dylan. Man, you guys know I'm a Kyle Bush fan. And RCR, RCR. Derek Krause, 29th. Chris Buescher ends up 30th after all the drama. John Hunter Nemechek in 31st. Tyler Reddick in 32nd. Daniel Hemrick, 33rd. And the guys who DNF from this race were Kyle Larson, Zane Smith, and Ryan Blaney. Overall, great race today. Uh, I'll do a little, like, segment set giving, like, my rating for the race or whatever. Kind of like Eric Estep does if you watch out of the groove. But we'll have the the groovy gauge Dagley edition. But um, shout out Eric, by the way. I watch Eric all the time. Gotta love Eric. But I'll probably I'll put it up somewhere here or over there. But uh, I don't. I'll have to get better at graphic design because I have no idea how I do something like that yet. But man, this race at Darlington. Oh my God! You gotta stop friggin' burping. I do it every video. You guys will notice every video, whether I'm gaming or what, I am burping. But see what I mean? Okay, but great race overall at Darlington. I think there's still a little bit we can imp can improve on in terms of the racing product. Uh, maybe, I mean, it really just comes down to horsepower at the end of the day. I, I know Elton Sawyer came out last week last week on the dale jr download and said it could be it costs so much but then why does everyone else not involved with nascar saying it would be so easy to put a thousand horsepower in these cars you know what i mean i would i'd love to see the the guts been put back into these cars it would i would love to see that but i mean that's all that we can improve on you really can't ask for much better than this like the next gen on mile and a half phenomenal i mean mile and a half even super speedways i find are really good and i mean well darlington's not a mile and a half but it's comparable to some of the mile and a half that we have but i mean short tracks and road courses we should get a package going 
or some sort of like different tire going for that hopefully we'll get a good result with the new compounds at the wilkesboro all-star race next weekend but overall i think this darlington race was at least an 85 percent on my race rating scale um yeah i mean i definitely think there's some things that could have went better but overall great race i mean the only thing that might have brought a debbie downer to it is fox's commercials and the stages they went for to a commercial with 23 laps to go like right after busher got the lead from reddick and keselowski and i it looked like it was going to be a full screen commercial i'm like they are not going to a full screen commercial with 23 laps to go it was a side by side thank god but oh my god i was about to lose it if it was a full screen commercial i would have lost it but man with fox it feels i know they're trying to jam the commercials in early but the amount of full screen commercials early in the race oh my god i gotta stop burping here but like the amount of full screen commercials is ridiculous like i wasn't what like fuck, people don't understand like i don't know why we will have full screen commercials in the year 2024 not next to nobody is watching full screen commercials when full screen commercials come on at my house i'm either going to the kitchen or the bathroom or my phone i ain't watching the commercials i'm the only way I'm watching the commercials is if I'm sitting there texting someone or my girlfriend about the race or whatever, and then uh, a, maybe an interesting commercial comes on with a NASCAR driver, say like Briscoe with Mahindra Tractors, but even that's rare these days. If you're going to put commercials in, put maybe put the NASCAR drivers in commercials. Maybe. Why am I swinging my arms around like this? I don't know, but... Yeah, 85% is my rating for this Goodyear 400 at Darlington Raceway. Oh my god, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Overall, great race at Darlington, and hopefully we'll get a similar result at Wilkesboro. It will be interesting to see how this car reacts to the new repave at North Wilkesboro that will... That will be an interesting watch, I will say that. Uh, I won't have a post-race reaction immediately af after the North Wilkesboro race. I will be away uh, at, at the lady friend's house. She's about a three and a half hour drive away, but I'll be home the next day. So I should be able to have a post-race review for Wilkesboro out Monday night, roughly. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't know for sure if that'll be the case or not, but I'm going to try to have it for Monday night next week. Coke 6, I'll, I'll have one out after that, I'm sure. I'll try to have one out after Gateway, Sonoma, uh, Iowa. I'll be in New Hampshire, so... <laughs> yeah, I probably won't have one for New Hampshire, but yeah. Uh, let me get... Let, look, English guy. Let me know what you guys thought of this Goodyear 400 in the comments down below. Great to see Brad K back in victory lane. And let's hope for some more great racing with this phenomenal momentum rolling into Wilkes County next weekend. I would love nothing more than North Wilkesboro to be an awesome race. That would have If North Wilkesboro is an awesome race, man, that would be so sick. Side note, I want North Wilkesboro to have a points paying race. If we're gonna take a Richmond date off, why not give it to North Wilkesboro? Let's bring the All-Star Race to The Rock. I like that idea. They just renovated the hell out of The Rock. Let's bring NASCAR back to The Rock. I know with, with contracts like SMI and all that stuff, it gets complicated, but I want to see NASCAR back at The Rock. Just me personally, but yeah. Let me know what you thought of Darlington in the comments down below, and I will see you next, probably Monday or Tuesday, for North Wilkesboro Recap. Take care and peace.